This is one of a series of short videos designed to support and enhance your understanding of some of the key concepts contained within A-Level Further Mathematics. If you've already mastered the basics of a topic, then the videos should stimulate your thinking and provide further insight. The focus is on looking in a bit more depth at examples that can be tackled using knowledge gained within the curriculum. These examples are not taken from any particular exam specification and as such may go beyond what you need to know for your examinations. However, they all illustrate key concepts that will help you by giving you a more thorough understanding. In this video, I am going to look at complex number loci in the Argon diagram. Here are three basic examples that you should already be familiar with. The first one is the modulus of z minus a is equal to some constant k. In my example, I've got the modulus of z minus 2 plus i. So if I mark the point 2 plus i on the Argon diagram, and then I remember that the modulus of z minus 2 plus i simply means the distance of our point from 2 plus i. If I understand this, then I know that I want all points that are a distance 3 away from 2 plus i, and I end up with a circle centred 2 plus i, radius 3. In my second example, I've got the modulus of z minus a is equal to the modulus of z minus b, where a and b are complex numbers. In my example, I have the modulus of z minus 4, meaning the distance away from the point 4 on the real axis, and the modulus of z plus 2, meaning the distance away from the point minus 2 on the real axis. If I mark these two points on the Argon diagram, then I can see that what I want are points that are equidistant from these two. There's an obvious point here, and if we think about it, more points here and here. If we continue in this way, we get a straight line that forms the perpendicular bisector of the two points. In the third example, I've got the argument of z minus a is equal to some angle alpha. In my example, I've got the argument of z minus 1 plus 2i is equal to pi over 4. And you should recognise that this is a half line beginning at the point 1 plus 2i and an angle pi by 4 to a horizontal baseline, remembering that the point 1 plus 2i itself is not included in the line because at that point the argument of z minus 1 plus 2i is undefined. Moving on now to look at loci in the Argon diagram in a bit more depth, I have an example here that needs a bit more thinking about. I've got the argument of z is equal to the argument of z minus 2 plus i. Remembering that arguments are always angles, we can think of this as some angle alpha is equal to an angle beta. It's also worth noting that both alpha and beta are arguments, and these are defined to lie within the range minus pi to plus pi for both alpha and beta. Alpha is the argument of z, and we measure this by measuring the angle from a horizontal baseline to the right of the origin. Beta is the argument of z minus 2 plus i, so we go to the point 2 plus i on the Argon diagram, and we need a horizontal baseline from which to measure the angle beta. To consider the condition needed for alpha and beta to be equal, I can consider some general point in the diagram, say there. To find alpha, I need to join the origin to that point, and alpha is the angle measured there. To find beta, I need to join 2 plus i to the same point, and beta is the angle measured there. It's clear that these angles can only be equal if the red lines are parallel, which means that we're restricted to points that lie on a line that passes through the origin and the point 2 plus i. 
So in order to examine the locus of points in a bit more detail, I've set this up so that we can see the origin and 2 plus i marked with crosses, and we can see a grey dotted line that represents the line on which all of our points must lie. But exactly which of these points requires a bit more investigation? This point Z in blue here is set such that it will always be blue when the argument of Z is equal to the argument of Z minus 2 plus i, but red when the arguments are not equal. We can move the point along using the slider here. So if I move Z in this region, we get lots and lots of points where the arguments alpha and beta, the angles alpha and beta, are equal. We keep going along this way. And you'll notice that when we get to the point 2 plus i itself, the point has turned red. And this is because at the point 2 plus i, the argument of z minus 2 plus i is undefined. So obviously the angles can't be equal because this one on the right hand side is undefined. We get a similar set of blue points down here. You can see the green angles alpha and beta are equal for this point z down here. And if I use the slider, got a whole series of blue points there and again once we get to the origin this time the argument of Z is undefined and so alpha and beta can no longer be equal because alpha is undefined. But what I think is really interesting is what happens if we move Z into the space between these two points. So if I use the slider to move Z along here it's red whole of this region we get red points sliding backwards and forwards and you can see why this is true. Alpha, the argument of Z, is an angle measured anticlockwise positive from the real axis there and there's a positive angle alpha. For a point here the argument beta will be a negative angle. It's measured from the horizontal to the right of 2 plus i and going round in that direction it will be a negative angle and those two angles are not equal. And that will be true for all points in between the origin and 2 plus i. So going back to our original diagram now, we'll be able to look at what points we can accept and can't accept to form the final locus. So here we have the origin and 2 plus i, and the locus is formed by two straight lines to the right and to the left, but with a gap in the middle. And remember that the two points themselves are not included because one or other of the arguments is undefined at that point. For my second example, I want to look in a bit more depth at regions in the argon diagram described by inequalities. And in this case here, we've got two inequalities that we want to satisfy at the same time. If I first write this as the modulus of z minus 2 plus i is equal to 3, we'll recognise straight away that that forms a circle with centre 2i and radius 3. And we've seen that before. For the second inequality, if I write this first as arg z is equal to pi over 3, we'll remember that this gives us a half line from the origin and at an angle there of pi over 3. So what we want to do now is to work out which parts of the diagram we can shade that satisfy both inequalities. And this is the most interesting part. Because we've got this modulus here less than or equal to 3, we need points that are inside the circle. That's easy. And here, because we've got less than or equal to pi over 3, we want points that are below the half line. And we're going to examine this in a lot more detail as we go on. So let's start by shading the easiest region to identify. All of the points in this region here are definitely inside the circle and they're below the line that we've drawn. With a little bit more thought, we can also include all of the points down here because they're still inside the circle they have negative arguments, which means that the arguments will be less than pi over 3. But what I think is really interesting is that we've got a third region to consider. 
in this region over here we're still inside the circle but you'll see that any point in there will have an argument remember arguments are measured from the horizontal line to the right of the origin all of the points here will have negative arguments all the way up to the real axis there if we go beyond the real axis then we'd be measuring the argument positive in that direction and so they don't satisfy the inequality so as long as we stay below the real axis there we've got a third region to include and I particularly like this example because I don't think that the shading we end up with is very obvious when we first look at the algebraic forms of the inequalities and I think it's a really nice example to help us understand positive arguments, negative arguments and inequalities in argon diagrams.